Hey everybody, come on in, come on in, Primetime Squad. Let's get this review on and pop it. Now, if y'all saw me earlier today, I guess it was some technical difficulties that I was experiencing. Um, so I just want to let you know, guys, know first off that um tonight we're supposed to be going to see uh the movie bill street me and well samantha and i you know for our sisters from another mr movie review segment so we will be going to see that tonight and hopefully within a week i'll be um going live with samantha and we're going to review if bill street could talk because i heard that was a wonderful movie a really good movie for those of y'all who have seen it already Make sure you tune in for our live within the next week. I'll post a notification about it and remind you guys. But also, um, just want to let you know if you have not seen it, to please try to see it by, you know, by maybe Saturday or Sunday, you know, because we'll probably do the review probably Sunday or Monday evening. I know it will be in the evening. So you got about five days <laughs> left to check that movie out. So you can join us uh, when we review that movie and give us our rating and, you know, let you know, let us know what you really think about the movie. But anywho, anywho, like I said, I want to apologize. Earlier, I was having some technical difficulties um, and I didn't realize it, so I'm sorry. I apologize. I really do. But anyway, come on in. Click the like button. Make sure you uh, share the live. Share it on your social media platform, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, whichever platform you use. And also, make sure you subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very kindly. But anyway, we're going to be going over... Um, Season 11, episode 11 of the Housewives of Atlanta. It was titled Text, Lies, and Therapy. Now, um, at the end of last episode, Portia and Candy, you know, they were going back and forth, basically, you know, um, regarding Portia still being in her fifis, about being put out of Candy and Ty's party, the party that uh, Candy actually threw for Ty's birthday. But, I mean, can you really blame her? I mean, who do you guys feel is wrong or right here in the situation? Do y'all feel like I do, which is that Candy should have done much more to acknowledge, you know, how Portia might have felt about the situation? Or do you feel like, you know, she should have at least, at least at the minimum, taken a second to get her side of the story? Because like I said on my last review... Candy and Portia, you know, in the past, a few episodes back, earlier in the season, you know, they were talking about squashing their beef and, you know, starting all over, trying to rekindle their friendship, you know, um, and start things anew. But, you know, Portia feels like right now, Candy is absolutely no longer her friend, and I don't blame her, again. But, um... I'm beginning to believe that maybe Candy really had no intentions of starting over with Portia, you know, like she said. I mean, she could at least get, I mean, at the minimum, again, she could at least get that girl two minutes of her time. Two minutes of her time, even though I know she had other distractions at her party. You know, these were your guests that you invited to your party. So I would think that you would have a little time to find out what the heck is going on before they just put anybody out. Not just Portia and Dennis, but put anybody out. But anywho, you know, Portia, um, she, I think for a second, forgot that she was pregnant. She's up there going all off, getting loud, screaming and yelling at Candy like she want to take her head off. Like, girl, <laughs> girl. You better remember, you do have a child inside that stomach. So, you know, just try to cool it off, tone it down. Nene and it was like, uh, Portia, bring it down. <laughs> bring it down. Bring it all the way down. But, you know, along with their appetite and them hormones, you know, pregnant women, they will get them upset and they will lose their everlasting minds. So, you know, you got to be careful messing around with them pregnant women when they get mad. But anywho, you know, just when I thought Candy was going to bounce out, you know, because last episode it seemed like Candy was ready to go, ready to leave. Um, Tanya, you know, and them convinced her to stay. And I should have known she was staying anyway because Candy loves food and they had some chefs up there. 
making that you know, scrimps and that rice and the vegetables and, you know, whatever else they had. So I should have known that she wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> but anyway, what do y'all think about that hibachi party? Like, all I want to know is if that shit was covered under her homeowner's insurance, did y'all see those flames? Like, I mean, those flames was almost reaching the darn ceiling. Everybody was pulling back their wig caps. I'm like, why the hell couldn't they put that big-ass hot plate outside somewhere on the patio in the backyard, in the driveway? I mean, somewhere. They had it down in the basement. That's like lighting a grill in your house. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm just glad they were safe. I'm just glad what they said. But everybody was pulling their wig caps back. Cynthia was pulling up her braids like Pippi Longstock, and you know, trying to get her braids out the way. <laughs> I was like, Lord Jesus, I hope they got some fire and extinguishers around there. But anyway, um, Shamari had me cracking up. Like, did y'all see how she dived head first into that hot plate of rice? Um, they had just fixed her plate. Everybody else was like, I'm hot. We going upstairs. Shamar was like, I'm hungry. I need to eat. You see that girl about this big anyway. Uh, she was like, I'm hungry. I got to eat. She threw her head head first in that plate of hot rice. I was cracking up. Like, okay. I understand if you can't use the chopsticks. I can't use chopsticks. But you know how back in the day, you know, okay, I know some of y'all got some old country folk in y'all family who don't always use silverware. I had some in mine. My grandma, my great-grandma, they sisters and stuff, they would dig right in that plate, pick up their food, their greens, their cabbage, their beans, whatever, and just smash it all around and eat it. I mean, I never did that. I like using silverware. <laughs> but, I mean, Shamari had no cooth. She had no cooth. <laughs> she was head first in that plate. I was like, now I see. Now I see why Ronnie was so upset when she was messing around with them women's. Them women's. Did y'all see how she was in that plate? Like, Shamari had her face like this. <laughs> She was like, <laughs> eating that rice. She was going to town on that rice. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, um, I, mm, mm, Ronnie. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I guess, you know, since Portia got shaded by Candy, she feels like, she can't be the only one feeling some type of way. So she throws Eva up under the bus. Now, I swear that I knew this was going to come back to buy Eva in the arse. But I thought maybe her and Cynthia might get into it, you know, during the reunion show when Andy and the producers, you know, get real petty. And they show all the shady scenes, all the petty scenes, you know, from the season. But I guess Portia couldn't wait. She was like, let's do this now. <laughs> let's do this now. So she done threw Portia, I mean, threw Eva under the bus. But was she lying? No. No. She ain't lying. She ain't lying. Eva throws shade all the time and then forgets, like, suddenly, all of a sudden forgets the shade that she threw. And I don't know how she forgot that she calls Cynthia the mother of the modeling, you know, world. That ish was funny as heck back then when her and Portia was talking about it and joking about it. And it's still funny. <laughs> it's still funny. She called her the house mother or the den mother. You know, like, okay, if y'all ever watch the TV show Pose, and how they show, like, the gay men, you know, cross-dressing and walking the catwalk. And they get all dressed up like women and stuff. And, you know, do their little moves and all that. And most of them stay, like, under one roof. And then, like, usually the oldest one or the most experienced one or the veteran, you know, of the... Uh, I don't know what they exactly call it, but the I know they do catwalking. I don't know the exact terms, but... um usually that's who they call the mother of the house or the den mother. So I don't know. If y'all ever watch that show, it's a really good show. Some people didn't watch it because it deal with gay men, cross-dressers, trans, you know. Me, 
if I like the storyline, I'll watch it and I'll review it. And if you check out my older videos, I was doing reviews on that show called Pose. But anyway, anyway. So Eva, how you gonna sit there and lie talking about in my heart of hearts with her beautiful gray eyes? In my heart of hearts, I don't have a shady bone, not a single shady bone in her body. But then you always throw a shade. You always, girl, you always throw a shade. <laughs> and then forgetting about it, like Portia said. But she got Portia together real quick. Like, okay, just because you pissed off Candy, just because Candy's pissed off at you, you are not about to have somebody else pissed off at me. Like, um, after Eva told them, you know, why they were really there, which was to invite them to Tokyo, Cynthia forgot anyway, just that quick. Just that quick just that quick that you know she was the veteran of the modeling world the house mother <laughs> she was like okay a trip to tokyo all right i forgive you this too shall pass <laughs> this too shall pass but do y'all think eva owes nini the best room when they do get to tokyo <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> now granted Nene was in her feelings. The rest of the ladies felt, you know, you had a wedding party. Nene's in the wedding party. Your wedding party takes a trip and goes, you know, celebrate out of town, you know, about you getting married. And Nene don't get an invite. None of them even gets, you know, an opportunity to even turn it down. Um. So, yeah, I think she owes her a trip to Tokyo, though. I think she cover it. <laughs> I think that should cover it. But y'all, when they got to Nene and Greg, you know, when they was working with, when he was working with the vegan chef um, to create his birthday dinner menu. Um, y'all, cancer is so, so very draining. And it's definitely taking a toll on Nene. And I think she at times is almost more affected by it than Greg. Um, being a caregiver to somebody with a critical disease like that can really, really test your patience, test your strength, your ego, your love. I mean, most of y'all already know that I work at a nursing home part time. And I've had people close to me, including my mom and my grandparents, you know, die of cancer. So I know firsthand, you know, what it's like and what caregivers go through. You know, they usually receive the brunt of the anger, the mood swings, the depression, you know, that ca that cancer patients go through, you know, and it's usually what, because they feel like they are at a standstill with their recovery or they think nobody really understands or really cares about what they are going through. Um, they don't really mean to be rude, you know, mean or nasty. They really don't. <laughs> they really don't. But cancer, phew, cancer is a B.I. Cancer is a B.I. <laughs> so Nene, just keep hanging in there. Keep being by her side. Continually being as supportive as caring as you can be. And this too shall pass. It shall pass. But how do y'all feel about Mike Hill now? Like, Mike Hill, not Will. Mike Hill, not Will. He kept making sure he stressed. He is Hill, not Will. Totally different men. <laughs> totally different men. <laughs> I really thought, you know, it was great how Cynthia gathered the ladies up to meet him all at once so they can drill him all at once, you know, to get to know him a little better and see where he stands, you know, or how he feels about Cynthia. Um, From his responses to their questions, do we now believe that their relationship is real? Like really genuine? Um, again, he made sure to keep reminding us he's heal, not will. <laughs> and it does seem like, you know, Cynthia really wants her friends to believe that not only what they have is serious, but that he is also a really great guy. So she brought a timer. She put it on the table. She said, y'all got three minutes, three minutes to ask him whatever they want. <laughs> Now, that first question, the first question was from Eva, which was, what do you feel like you can add to this already masterpiece of a woman? And 
And his answer was that he thinks they are two layers of cake and together they are the icing on top of the cake. Now, y'all, <laughs> y'all know I'm a custom cake decorator. I was like, what the hell? Man, what is you talking about? Um, Y'all both are two layers of a cake. And together, they are also the icing on top of the cake. <laughs> uh, Mike Hill and I will. Hill and I will. Did you not prep for this test? Did you not practice? You knew what you were coming into. But I'm going to give it to him that he probably was a wee bit nervous. You know, a little bit nervous at first. <laughs> But, <laughs> but he did do better on the second question from Eva, which was, um, what is it that you just love the most about Cynthia? And his answer was, he really loves how she is a beautiful person, but not only on the outside, um, she's just as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. And that I can definitely agree with. Um, Cynthia is really a very loving and caring person and sometimes naive, though, sometimes naive, which is probably why she be falling head over heels so quickly when it comes to men. <laughs> But anyway, anyway, that's a story for another day, another day. But I was really anxious, like, to find out what Candy um, was going to ask him. Like, I just knew Candy's uh, answer was going to be really good. Uh, she said, what is his go-to move that he knows is going to work with Cynthia? And he said he uses the cushion. I'm like... Um, okay, I know they can't get X-rated on this show, but the cushion, I'm like, what is you, okay, okay, you use the cushion, all right, I guess, I guess what he was trying to say in a roundabout way was maybe he likes doggy, <laughs> is that his go-to? <laughs> what do y'all think? When he was like, I, I I I like using the cushion. I mean, I'm like, okay, maybe he from you know certain angle. Like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's what he was talking about. And then Marlo asked, was he getting paid today, Cynthia? And I was like, um, I was all ears, like all ears, like, oh, what? What did she ask? <laughs> But he was like, hey, no, I'm not paying a day, Cynthia. I'm doing this totally free of charge. Totally free of charge. And then she asked, when was the last time he had an STD tested? And Cynthia was like, okay, okay, okay. Time's up. Hell no, stop the clock, stop the clock. She hitting down on the clock, pat, 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 trying to get the clock to stop. Time's up, y'all. Time's up, y'all. But I was like, hey, y'all done already, you know, had him swimming around in the Bailey waters, you know, doing the backstrokes and the doggy paddling and holding his nose in the water for as long as he can. Playing with the cushions. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a little, little too late for that question anyway, ain't it? <laughs> I mean, ain't it? But anywho, anywho, um, do y'all think he passed the test? I think he did okay. I think he did okay. I, I do really believe that he is into Cynthia um, and vice versa. So we shall see how this works out. I wish her the best <laughs> with her heel, not will. <laughs> but now, Portia. Portia, Portia, Portia. I guess since after the birthday party incident, her trust level that she had for Dennis has went down. And I don't blame her not one bit. So what she did was she went to visit her therapist, the same one that she used when her and Cordell were having problems in their marriage. The same one that she used when she was divorcing Cordell. Do y'all remember when Portia was married to Cordell? Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God. I used to just cringe and shake my head like every single time he would either be demeaning her or belittling her. I mean, 
times when she wouldn't stand up for herself, you know, when it came to him. He was so very controlling, and she always had to report to him to get permission to go anywhere, to do anything, you know, as if she was like his little child or something. And I didn't like it. The ladies, you know, they didn't like it either. And they used to get on her about it. Like, girl, come on now. Tell that boy bye. <laughs> boy, bye. But anyway, like when they showed the scene um, when they were going to the strip club. And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. I have to call my man. I got to call my husband and get permission, you know, from Cordell first before, you know, she goes to the strip club, script, the script, <laughs> the strip club, because he'll get angry with her if he found out later. So, you know, she was, do, 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 do. um, honey, um, honey, the ladies, they want to go to the strip club. Um, is it okay? Is it okay if I you know, join them for the evening. I promise I'll be back home, you know, by search this time to fix your dinner and make, okay, she might not do, do, didn't do all that, but she did have to get permission. But anyway, I was like, oh my God, they broke up. She uh, finally seen the light. Now, finally seen that bright light. But anyway, when she started breaking down in the counseling session, you know, about Dennis, I was beginning to feel like, what she is going through is what a lot of women go through as far as, you know, what uh, forgetting who they are, forgetting what they stand for, and forgetting their standards, you know, when they meet a man, because a lot of men um, be looking for women, just like a lot of women be looking for men, um, good men. We be looking for good men, at least most of us, most of us. Be looking for good men and seriously want healthy relationships. But a lot of men are out there looking for women too. But a lot of them is looking for ones that don't want a lot from them either. They don't want to be questioned too much. They don't want you inquiring too much about what they're doing, where they've been. When you ain't with them, they don't want you asking too many questions. Um, Remember a few episodes back when Candy was trying to tell her about his pattern? You know, about his M.O., his pattern, tattooing every girl's name on his body, you know, and buying them Rolexes and all that. Portia was like, I don't want to ask him too many questions, you know, too soon, because I think she didn't want to scare him off, just in case he was, you know, hiding something. But, I mean, Portia, she wants to be in a relationship badly, and she also wanted a baby badly. So we'll just have to see if she ends up with the baby and the man in the end. But anywho, when Greg was giving his speech at his birthday party, Nene had me getting emotional. She had that little tissue and she was wiping her face and around her eyes. And, you know, I think she was trying her best to keep her composure, trying to compose herself and not break down and start crying. I mean, I am so glad that Greg, you know, in in a way, um, with without him probably purposely trying to, but, you know, in a way, being a spokesperson for black men who we all know so oftentimes are not willing to go to the doctor to get annual or routine checkups, you know, when they get a certain age. And don't let them be in pain. Don't let them feel something is wrong in their body. They feel a pain, a sharp pain through their chest, their arms, their leg, their stomach, their groin area. Huh. They'll do anything possible, everything possible, including putting some robotism on it. You know, robotism, some tussing, like Chris Rock used to say. <laughs> Mama's back in the day, they put some tussing on it. You fall, tussing. You get an owie on your knee, tussing. You scrape your finger, tussing. You got a headache, tussing. Your teeth fall out, tuss some tussing on it. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I'm so glad that his sons are listening. They're learning. They're taking Nene's and Greg's advice, you know, on basically y'all around that age now where y'all have to make sure y'all taking care of yourself, because especially, especially if what Greg has is a genetic disease. You know, you want to start getting tested now, start, you know, going to the doctor on a normal routine basis, because if it's genetic, 
You don't want to get something and it spreads, you know, because you're not routinely going to the doctor. So it's best to really catch it, you know, quickly. So, you know, men, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Go to the hospital. Go to the hospital now. But uh, finally, finally, when Dennis came over Portia's house and she started discussing with him, you know, some of her insecurities that were sneaking back up from her past relationships, did it really seem like he was taking her seriously? Like, to me, I'm sorry, my son is texting me. Like, to me, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it didn't seem like he was taking her too seriously. Um, it seemed like he was basically, you know, trying to pacify her and tell her, you know, what he knew that she wanted to hear. Um, he was smirking at her, giggling, uh, laughing at her, you know, when she was really pouring out, you know, how she felt. She was like, okay, we both agreed that we would cut our exes off. You would cut yours off. Her name is Sherry. And I will cut mine off. We both agreed. I stopped communicating with my ex, but you didn't cut yours off. You still communicating with your ex. And he just was giggling and kept saying, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. He don't think he did anything wrong. And she was really trying to get him to see why she's uncomfortable about his relationship with his ex. I mean, heck. The ex just got them put out of a party where all these celebrities was, all these famous people. Um, You got put out, kicked out, thrown out, <laughs> thrown out of the party. And he was still texting a girl like after that, texting her, Kiki, um, why was you acting like that? Why was you doing all that? You know, <laughs> Kiki with her, Kiki. And then he's still smiling at Portia, you know, when she's trying to get deep with him and everything. She was like, okay, honey, honey, just admit it. Just own up to it. Just own your shit. You lied. You lied. You still communicating with your ex after we agreed that you're not going to be communicating with your ex. <sighs> Jeez, just own up to it. <laughs> but then he finally apologized. But when he apologized, what was he doing? St st stuttering? stuttering just stuttering and she was like what are you apologizing for oh my god he was just stuttering just stuttering away and then he had the nerves to say you know what this is all petty this is all petty there's nothing to worry about i st I, I ain't did nothing wrong I, I, okay 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 i guess you know i shouldn't have let her you know do this and that i mean i don't know I don't know what y'all think. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Dennis. I, I, I'm just going to keep giving him the side eye. I'm going to keep my eye, both of them. I'm going to keep both my eyes on him because, and Portia, you better do it too. You better do it too. I know you really want to be in a relationship. I know you really want a baby, but again, we shall see. We shall see if she's going to end up with the baby and the man. In the end, we shall see. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Let me know what you thought about Portia and Dennis' situation. Uh, let me know what you think about Cynthia and Mike Hill not will. Hill not will. Let me know what you think about their relationship. Do y'all think it's really genuine? And unlike the, you know, past relationships. <laughs> and I do believe he's not getting paid to date her. I do believe that part. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, y'all let me know how y'all all uh, felt about this episode. Put it all in the comments section. And make sure if you didn't already like the video, make sure you like it. Make sure you share it on your social media platforms. And also, if you are not already a subscriber to my channel, please click subscribe. Please click that notification bell so you can get all of my notifications when I do go live. And in the meantime and in between time, as usual, Primetime Squad, stay safe. Be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.